turn, you'll now see the jets collapse to around six to eight feet away from each other as Red One calls them into short diamond formation in this left-hand turn. Red One is squadron leader Jim Turner. It's his third and final year as the team's leader. He's a former Jaguar pilot, but he's very experienced in the display world, having displayed the Jaguar. Spent three years previously with the Red Arrows, including leading the Synchro pair. He also spent three years as the advisor to the Royal Saudi display team. Yeah, Reds 2 and 3 acknowledge the move to Eagle. They do so with very metronomic cadence in their voices. The idea is that on the count of what in their head, the pilots extend their air brakes, and on the count of six, they retract their air brakes. So that enables the three aircraft on each wing to drop back in unison to form the shape of Eagle. Now in from the right hand side, they're going to show us Eagle. Can you guys see it? Nope. Oh, there. <laughs> <laughs> I was looking at you. <laughs> <laughs> when the Renaro's formed in 1964, ready for that first season in 1965. The aircraft they used was known as the Fallen Nat, and that was the advanced jet trainer in the Royal Air Force in that era. In 1976, the Hawker Sydney Hawk entered service, and in 1980, the Red Arrows started to use the Hawk as their aerobatic aircraft. It's that aircraft we still use today. The Hawk is now a product of BAE Systems, and it continues to impress in its guise as an advanced jet trainer. In from the left now, you'll see Reds 4 and 5 have moved forward. This is to form the shape of the Russian fighter jet, the Su-27. Where are they? The NATO code word for the Su-27 is the flanker. form a very wide shape now. Reds 8 and 9 will move to the outside edges of the formation. And from Red 9's left wing tip through to Red 8's right wing tip, the formation will now measure 100 metres or 300 feet wide. So to enable the formation to stay as one unit as they manoeuvre around the sky, the outside pilots really have to anticipate their control inputs. And they do so by using the cage in Red 1's voice command. But now, in Phoenix formation, please, can we have a big patriotic round of applause as they come in, in Phoenix! doing video. I can watch you later. On the leader's right wing is the first of our new pilots for this year. He's Red 2, right left turn, Stu Campbell. Stu is a former Tucano instructor. You'll see the Tucano display later before you need to train a basic fast jet pilot. And Stu also displayed the Tucano back in 2008. Operationally, the smoke's on to the right 45 degrees, you see another shape forming. This is now our trademark shape, and they're going to come in reversing this formation, which is diamond. Oh, 
number pilots on the left hand side and the even number pilots fly on the right hand side. In their three year tour with the team, the pilots will generally start at the front near the leader and as their proficiency improves, they move further back. On the leader's left wing now is the other of our new pilots for this year, he's Red 3, Flight Lieutenant Joe Hurston. Joe is a former Hawk instructor and Tornado pilot. In fact, Joe's the only pilot on the team to have instructed on this version of Hawk, we call the T Mark 1, and also the Royal Air Force's new advanced jet trainer, the Hawk T Mark 2. Now out to the left, they have formed a very iconic shape. This is of the supersonic airliner, and they're going to show you Concorde. Now move forward to field wing, red seven jet at the back of the formation. Feather and arrow is a bit of a mouthful to say on the radio. On the radio. So back in the 60s when they first moved this shape, they called it Fred. That is now the end of the first half of the display. So far you've seen all nine aircraft together for...